Hello everyone and welcome back to our Color Pie Philosophy series. In these videos we explore the psychology, strengths, and weaknesses of the two color cycle in magic using magic's original color pie theory. Now in case you've missed previous episodes, here are a few links for you. We've done a video covering all the colors individually and a video talking about is it in all of its awesome glory. I suggest starting with the original color pie video if you haven't seen it already. Hope you enjoy the video, and if you do, remember to hit that like button right down there. It uh, helps out a lot. The Golgari Swarm, the organized representation of black and green combined, is a much beloved and hated guild seemingly polarizing to most players. For us to truly understand what it means to be Golgari, we have to dig deep. To do that, let's build a foundation of understanding. We'll begin with black. Black is the most misunderstood color in Magic. Black is not inherently evil. Black can be evil like any other color, but it's not naturally evil. Black is the most down-to-earth color there is. Black doesn't believe in optimism or pessimism. It doesn't believe in unnecessary social constructs or morals or ethics or even laws sometimes. Everything that black does, it does for the self. If black is one thing, it's self-serving, and everything black does comes back to that idea. This is why black so often seeks power, because power is what gets you whatever you want. If you have power, your ambitions are much easier to attain. Alright, this is how black thinks. I want something, okay, I'll go get it. That's it. There's no second guessing, nothing. Point A to point B. No matter what it takes, black will do that to get what it wants. Oftentimes, this means breaking the rules, stepping on other people, basically pretending the rest of the world doesn't exist. Black doesn't have the time, patience, or selflessness to care about morality or laws or ethical behavior. Those are all just a waste of time if they're standing in your way. That's black in a nutshell. Supremely selfish, always looking out for itself, doing whatever it takes to get what it wants regardless of anything or anyone else. Just stay out of its way. Green is not ambitious. It isn't naturally selfish. It's accepting. It's calm for the most part. Green believes that everything is already as it should be. There's no angst, no inner conflict within, no fighting back against nature. Pure green, unadulterated green, that's the closest any color gets to true peace. Peace through acceptance, peace through community, and peace through understanding. Green is all about interdependence, believing that all living things exist to work together to maintain the perfect world that nature has created. In some ways, this belief borders on fanaticism which is why you see rampant growth and giant creatures attacking seemingly for no reason. Green seeks to convert everyone. Green wants everyone to know that green is correct, that nature got it right, and to do that, showing off a little strength is well worth it. It's an interesting idea. Green is peaceful within, but uneasy and driven to convert without. Something to think about. Black seeks to take advantage of every opportunity, using the world's shortcomings to its advantage, manipulating any system to get what it wants, Green believes in being part of the system, doing your part, a cog in the machine, as it were. Given these basic ideas, you can see why black and green are complete opposites. Arguably the most enemy of enemy colors, it's hard to imagine black and green agreeing on anything. We're talking about one color that uses death willy-nilly to get what it wants, and another color that cherishes the value of life. So how in Dominaria's name do these two colors connect? Let me explain. When you really think about it, no two colors know more about life and death than black and green. Yes, black is selfish and power hungry and completely ruthless, but you have to admit, for how often it manipulates death, it has at least a mild mastery of the life-death cycle. Black understands that life and death are different. It understands that undeath is essentially life. True death, inanimate bodies, useless. A dead body isn't going to get you anywhere, most of the time, but an undead zombie? While that is a distorted version of life, it is life. So when you think about the appreciation and understanding of life and death in the magic universe, black gets it. It gets it so that it can manipulate and totally mess with it, but it gets it. So why am I telling you this? Because this is the connection. For two colors to come together, there has to be a connection. This is that connection. Green knows all about life and death. The cycle of life is part of nature. It's part of everything, practically worshipped. This is why you see such primal graveyard recursion in green. Green is omniscient when it comes to life and death. And while Green does consider the cycle sacred, they believe that regrowth and regeneration exist naturally to be used and celebrated for the good of nature. And in that moment right there, that's our tie. Both Green and Black care about the cycle of life and death and respect its power. For different reasons, certainly. But it doesn't change the fact that there isn't another color that understands it like they do. This is a connection only these two colors share. 
It's almost like while they know they can't stand each other's opinion on the cycle itself, they can appreciate the level of understanding the other has achieved. We'll build from the bottom up. Up to this point, we've been laying the groundwork for this guild's existence. From what you've heard so far, what do these two colors fundamentally have in common? Strength. Black desires power and understands that power equals true strength. Strength lets you do whatever you want. Strength is survival. Green understands that. Survival of the fittest is natural, evolution, growth, predation. Green understands power and strength. Green believes that it's natural for the strong to kill the weak in nature. Black does too. Strength is the foundation we'll be building on. We know green respects strength and power. That makes sense. So take that idea, the idea that green respects the power in nature, and add black's ambition to that. In the world of nature, life is relatively simple. If you're the strongest, you're the best. Done. Over. Black gets it. So how does black help? It adds its manipulation of death. Sure, green believes in regrowth, but that's over time. Black doesn't want to wait. Black reverses death immediately. Ugly and disgusting? Yeah, of course. Rotten decay exists, but also effective. Black takes the life-death cycle and pushes it into overdrive. Still natural for the most part, just accelerated. The true power of the Golgari, and ultimately where they connect the most, is their bond over two ideas. First, avoid true death. Always be using death to fuel life. Second, be the most powerful, by any means necessary, as long as they're somewhat natural. In a combination like this, both colors have to give up something for this to work. Green gives up the natural cycle of life and death in regards to its normal time frame and general use. Black gives up its unbridled ambition to a degree, agreeing to gain power as naturally as possible. Now that we've connected the colors, how are they applied practically to magic? The greatest strength of the black-green color combination is the fact that it just never dies. Embodying everything the Golgari believe, black-green decks are not easily kept down. Abusing graveyard recursion, library manipulation, and practically invulnerable over the long term to board wipe effects, getting rid of a black-green army is not only difficult, but oftentimes futile. Even now, in modern, we see the extremes the Golgari will go to never die to truly embrace life. That's right, dredge. Dredge is everything that the Golgari believe in. Recursion of life, death to fuel life, nothing is ever the end. As we were explaining this color combination, the examples were all around us. Look at Delirium and Standard. Graveyard-based mechanic using death and decay as a way to fuel life and power. In many ways, Black Green is the most aggressive color pair there is, not because it's particularly fast, but because it just never goes away. Ever. The weakness of the Golgari is actually rooted in its biggest strength. Dredge is the manifestation of everything the guild believes, but in many ways it's a wild card mechanic. Individually, both green and black have pinpoint precision when it comes to regeneration. Green regrowth effects take specific cards without any additional cost. Black reanimation spells have a clear focus. Dredge, while it does give you something back, it takes a lot, seemingly at random. It is not precise. It does not have pinpoint accuracy. It lacks real control. And while more cards in your graveyard is good, you don't know which cards those are going to be. Ever see Dredge just blank? Yeah, not pretty. That's Black Green's biggest problem, the absolute and sincere lack of full control. While these two enemy colors can work together in a limited capacity, full integration is just impossible, leading to instability. It's the more you know. Now when it's all said and done, black and green almost couldn't be more different. Black desires power and will do literally anything to attain it. Green desires harmony, acceptance, and understanding of the natural ways of the world. And while there is a connection between the two respecting true power, understanding life and death, it's impossible to ignore their differences. The Golgari will always be a guild in flux, fighting back and forth between ambition and harmony. But if there's one thing I want you to take away from all this, it would be what I say next. While the black-green color combination can be ugly and disgusting, it doesn't mean that it's inherently evil. Can it be evil? Absolutely, of course. But it isn't always evil. I feel like that's important to point out. The Golgari get a bad rap sometimes. They could really use a PR firm or something. Just ugh. That's going to do it for this episode of Color Pie Philosophy. What'd you think? Anything about the Golgari you didn't expect? I'd love to hear what you're thinking in the comments. Please let me know your thoughts. We work really hard in this series, so your words are always appreciated. Also, which guild would you like to see us tech next? We'll cover all two color combinations before we do anything else. So please, let me know which guild you'd like, and if you see someone else who commented your favorite guild, be sure to give their comment a thumbs up so we know what you want. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.
This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. With Aether of Volt on the horizon, you gotta be prepared. You can pre-order a box of the new set right now on TCG Player for $92. That's it, $92. Much cheaper than many stores, so if your local store is overcharging by a lot, or you don't even have a local game star, you can get your fix right here. Super easy, enjoy.